this lesson, we will begin our discussion on conflict of laws or private international law by having a look at what is conflict of laws or what amounts to private international law. First and foremost, what we must understand is that conflict of laws deals with a part of the law which comes into operation when legally confronted with some foreign element. By and large, the entirety of the world is not governed by one succinct type of law. In essence, throughout history, different jurisdictions and different countries have adopted different modes or different methods of portraying or ascertaining the law. In this context, if for example we take a scenario where there is a contract which is made in France um, for the goods of said contract to be delivered to Canada and an accident occurs in Italy where the passenger who is injured is in fact British. In this context, you have four different circumstances with laws pertaining to different countries and the injury sustained in another place as well as the person who is injured being a resident or a citizen of a completely different country. In such a situation, it is important to identify which laws are applicable and why they are so applicable. Having said that, there are a number of aims of this subject which we will be covering throughout this course. First and foremost, the recognition and the enforcement of foreign judgments when we consider parties who are not native of that particular country, be it the UK or any other country. In this context, if a dispute has been litigated in another country and if it is applicable to the current jurisdiction, if at all, which law is to be used in such a context. Secondly, we will have to establish jurisdiction. Who has a right to hear this matter? This makes up a fundamental part of this subject um, and private international law. In essence, it is a matter of setting out the conditions in which a court is competent enough to hear the action. This depends on a case-by-case -case basis and precedent case law plays a pivotal role in this context. Thirdly, the choice of law. Which law of which country is applicable? By what law the rights of the parties are to be ascertained? This is known as the applicable law. At this juncture, what we need to understand is that there is indeed a process in effect. Firstly, the establishment of the jurisdiction to identify who has a right. Next, to characterize or classify what type of action has occurred in essence whether it relates to contract law, tort law, marriage law, etc. You might understand why this is referred to as private international law at this juncture, primarily because we are dealing with civil wrongs as opposed to criminal liability. More often than not, criminal liability may have to be adduced based on the actual location that said crime has occurred. At this point, we then begin by understanding what amounts to lex causa or the selection of the legal system that governs the matter. As we move on in this course, we will start looking at connecting factors. In essence, the selection of the governing law. For instance, if A, let's say, dies interstate, domiciled in Italy, while leaving shares in England and a house in Scotland, what amounts to his property, the assets that he has in the different jurisdictions? This would depend primarily based on the individual, on either his nationality, where he is living, who his heirs are, and so on. For instance, many of the matters pertaining to conflict of laws in relation to interstate succession will be considered based on movable as well as immovable property. In the case of shares, for instance, which amounts to movable property, the distribution may be to his lex domicili, or the law of his domicile, where he is as opposed to if it's a house which is immovable in nature, the distribution usually occurs to his lex situs, or the law of the place where the property is situated. These are some of the connecting factors that we might have to discuss throughout this particular course. Some other connected factors have to be discerned based on the type of jurisdiction we are talking about. Not every country, much like the UK, is common law based. You have many European countries in which they are civil law based, very inquisitorial in nature. For the countries which are common law based, the law of lex domicili or the law of the domicile applies, 
whereas in relation to civil law countries, it's the lex patri, or the law of his nationality. Primarily speaking, the connecting factors are a multitude of factors that have to be considered. Besides the nationality or the domicile, there is lex fori, or the law of the court the trial is taking place. Lex contracts, the law governing the contract itself. Lex loci delicti, the law of the place where the tort was committed in the first place. Or in some instances, lex loci celebrationis, or the law of the place where the marriage is celebrated. What you might understand from these different modes of connecting individuals is that not only is it on a case-by-case -case basis, but it depends on the person, the country, as well as the wrong that is purported. Throughout the next few lessons, we will go in depth in identifying these connecting factors, jurisdiction, as well as recognition and enforcement of the law. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Click on a subject of interest to learn more.